Hey everybody, welcome to Outside the Box with Tony Vaughn on the Fabulous Expansion Network. Today with us we have Tammy Broswell from Chile, Michigan. She is amazing. She is a channeler. She is a, a sensitive to energy. Um, she also does some, some past life, not necessarily regression, I think, but, uh, but integration and just has the best personality. She was just so fun to talk to. So please enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. Um, I want to say thank you so much to Tammy for showing up with us from beautiful but cold Michigan. So how are you doing? Thanks so much. Great. great. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> That's great. We were just um, talking before this, and so we're both feeling kind of silly. <laughs> a lot of giggling going on. Yeah. yeah so um, my first question always, and might as well start from the beginning, is how did this stuff um, start with you? And how confusing was it? <laughs> um, well, I didn't figure most of it out till I got older, but it started, I remember as far back as four years old and a memory I have at four years old happened on another plane of existence. It didn't even happen in this one, but it's as clear as any other memory I've ever had. And even Did more- you know? so, Did you know it was at another plane of not existence? Not at four, not at four, because it was just, a memory of mine as I got older that I am oh, okay at four years old I used to go across the street I lived in an apartment building and there was a nine-year-old about nine-year-old little girl I can't remember a name for her and her and I would go out across this little street through these bushes and there was this playground I even fell off the merry-go-round and was hanging on and people were trying to stop it with you know have you ever fallen off a merry-go-round and we're swinging yeah well, you said, and you try to stop it real slowly without hitting the person too. <laughs> it's very vivid. And we went there more than once. And I've told my mom about it years later. And she's like, well, number one, there was no nine-year-old girl that lived in the building. And number two, at four years old, I wasn't going to let you wander off somewhere with some nine-year-old little girl. Oh my gosh. So you're and, like, okay, then where was I? <laughs> well, the interesting thing is I <clears throat> moved. I lived, in, I grew up in Michigan. And when I was 21, I moved to Florida. So then I lived in Florida till about 2007, when I was what, 30, about 37, and moved back to Michigan. And I thought, you know, I'd really love to go to that park. It's such a vivid memory. And the park doesn't exist. There's a lake there. It, there was wow. no park ever there. But I had been at that park. I even took other people. So it was more of a like a other dimensional experience. I took other people to the park with me. So. Our memories wow. come from all sorts of places. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, that's really interesting. So uh, that's really where it was like, that's a real strong early one. And then I felt energy. But you, I, did you not know that that was a thing until you got older? older? Yes. Because I mean, at the time you're four, you just think that you went to the park. Like you don't I think. Would, you obviously it, right? I thought I was going to the park. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that was something you looked back on and you're like, uh, now that I think about it, you know, that maybe. Oh. Now there's no, the, all the evidence points that there was no park, there was no little girl, there was no, but I, I went there and I played on the merry-go-round, it was like, any <laughs> like something was there, because I was <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, I was there. I remember walking through the bushes and yeah, and, and I can, I can still feel the entire experience. Wow. I mean, like to that degree. And then I also had some energetic experiences that I still have today that I didn't know that's what they were when I was four so I was really obviously tuned in at that time yeah and then as I got older I felt spirits around and um, things would happen things would tap on my shoulder or talk to me mostly at night you know when you're relaxed in that space before you are too asleep that you're not conscious but yeah relaxed enough that communication is easy and so um, wasn't until I was like, well, I didn't share with anybody as I was growing up. My father was, um, I say harsh. I, if he, I couldn't do anything right, according to him. And I, it was just his own understanding of things. Um, but I was always afraid of him either picking on me or being mad at me. So I didn't tell anybody about this stuff because it was yeah, don't get unusual. Yeah, <laughs> But I watched Twilight Zone and I watched In Search of with Leonard Nimoy and different shows like that and Vincent Price movies. 
and they were all out there, you know, unusual things. So I just thought it's because I like to watch all those things. It's just, that's what I like. I yeah. didn't realize that I was experiencing a lot of the stuff I was experiencing really. I thought it was my imagination. I had a yeah. good imagination. And then when I was 13, my parents got divorced and my mom and I moved into a, an apartment and uh, her younger brother had died just before I turned four. And he was very close to me and he was very close to her. They were only a couple years apart. And a song came on our giant um, console. You remember those back in the eighties with the eight track and the, oh, yeah, the yeah. and you lifted the lid on them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, a song came on and my mom said, oh, that's Paul's favorite song. That was her brother. And the volume went way up on the song. And, wow. and we, all, we both felt something. I feel tingles right now. And then <laughs> we felt this energy like pass through each of us. And it was warm and cold at the same time. But it was amazing feeling. And that was the first experience I had with someone else. And so my mom shared experiences she had throughout her life. And we started to be able to openly talk about this kind of thing. So I was no longer alone in not being able to have anybody to share stuff with or understand things more. Yeah. So are you an only child or was there siblings? No, I, had a, I have a younger brother. Oh, okay. But he, yeah, as far as I know, he doesn't experience anything. Yeah. So um, not a lot happened after that. Um, but I've, I, I've had experiences with all my grandparents around death and, um, and so when I was 17, my grandfather had a massive stroke two days before my 17th birthday. And, I, and when I was growing up, I spent all my summers with him and my grandma. They were my mom's parents. And um, his body decided to stop because I believe he already left, his soul left that day that he had the stroke. Yeah. Um, but his body stopped on my birthday. Okay. And then uh, my birthday is December 12th, so it's round Christmas. And um, a couple weeks after that was the winter break for school. And during that two weeks of winter break, I didn't eat, I didn't drink, and I didn't sleep. I slept for three hours every day from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. and I didn't eat or drink. And then everybody, I lost a lot of weight and everybody just thought I was a teenager having an eating disorder. Yeah, um, and, easiest, uh, easiest explanation. Well, who knows what, I mean, what else would cause that other than a little bit of upset from my grandfather's death, but it didn't hit anybody else like that. Yeah. And what I came to know years later is that it was, um, when things like that happen, they're uh, an energetic shift, like a cleansing. So yeah. basically I released everything that was heavy and then went into a new space because after that two weeks was over. I actually realized I had lost a bunch of weight and I thought, oh dear, that's not good. So I said, okay, we're done with this. <laughs> and I started eating and living normally again. <laughs> and, um, but after that, oh, the, the spirits, I don't see them like people. The only person I've ever seen really like that was my deceased uncle, Paul. Um, but everybody else, I just feel. And I kept things pulling my hair and and doing things it didn't matter where i sat or what i did i think back against the wall no they can get behind you <laughs> even if you're right up against the wall <laughs> like they were trying to mess with me just to let me know there was nowhere i could go yeah you can't hide <laughs> <laughs> and and they just increased after that and then i just started to get more into studying especially reincarnation i'm fascinated by um, yeah. other lifetimes and that connection we have with the akashic records and so now I can just go in and check out other lifetimes for myself, for clients. They're generally ones, though, that have something to do with an influence they have in this lifetime now. I don't generally just go in to find out, oh, I was so-and-so. It's more, how can I shift that life to shift this one? Right. So that, so is that one of the things that kind of like that you specialize in is, is not necessarily past life regression, but... Um, helping people integrate what they've done in previous lives into this life? Yeah, it's one of the tools and all the stuff that I do. Yeah, if, if that's, if I'm helping someone and I'm not getting anything right now, I'll just say, is this from another lifetime? And then I'll be showing stories. I've had some really cool stories come out for people and they're like, 
that sounds really crazy, but it also feels true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it, it resonates. It's like, oddly, I, I know that is right. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I've always loved the idea that, um, that whatever I do in, in the, the life that I'm conscious of right now, um, that it affects, because I know nothing is past or future. I know that it's all happening at the same time. And so that if I make, you know, quantum shifts in what's going on in my life right now, that it's going to affect the lives that I'm living elsewhere on other, you know, realms, um, vibratory patterns, you know, whatever it is. And so I, I've always loved the idea of that, of, of that. Is that something that you agree? Well, they all, I mean, everything that we do ripples out. Yeah. What I think is interesting about those, see, that's just saying, okay, it is happening, which if, if you feel it is, then it is. But I, I do like, and I found with energy work that when we can identify something and consciously make a shift to it, it's much more powerful yeah. because we're involved in it. We're part of it. So recognizing other lifetimes, and sometimes it's just making peace with whatever that old story was or that other story was, or actually yeah. completely shifting it. I just let whatever guidance comes through, like you can actually change this. I helped someone go from this destitute life in another lifetime to changing it into something that was thriving. And okay. I didn't think I could do something like that or help somebody do that. And it, you know, it changed and they changed. And it's like yeah. the beauty of playing with energy and who we really are on an energetic level is there, it's, there are no limits. If you can imagine it, it can be. <laughs> Okay, so let me ask you this then. Um, do you believe that it's, it's possible for, so like back in 2000, I had, um, in January of 2000, I was struck by this inexplicable feeling of all of a sudden of anxiety. I mean, that I was having panic attacks and situation wise at that point in my life, there was really no reason um, for that to be happening. And I, and I remember telling my mom, like, I'm like, this is not my crap. I don't know who this belongs to, but it's not mine. Like, I'm not supposed to be somebody who's riddled with anxiety and can't go to work or, you know, can't take care of her kids right now or, you know, whatever. Like, I'm like, this is not mine. I know it's not mine. Or, or at least I felt like it wasn't mine in this life. You know what I mean? So is it possible for, um, not only for parallel lives that you're living for that to affect you like that here on this plane or or even uh I always wondered too if it was because of something happened to maybe a loved one of mine who had passed over and was maybe close to me or somehow I was feeling something that had happened to them uh, maybe at that same age or or time in life or something well, it could actually be, to me, a, a couple of things. One is that it came from another lifetime. And, it, it, and you were at a point where it was ready to be cleared, okay. healed, and completed. So our soul wants experiences to have the experience and move through it emotionally uh, and sensory. We, we like the physical body because we have all these senses we don't have when we're in energy form. Yeah. And so it's moving through that. In our soul, then when it completes that, feels complete and satisfied in that energy, doesn't need to repeat it. So that could have been something from another lifetime. Whatever you felt like it might be coming from, it's likely where it was coming from. But it could also be um, an empathic uh, intake of what's going on in the world. Like I take on world trauma. Like 9-11, I felt wow. the morning before it happened. And I actually felt relief when the, the plane hit the building. When everybody else freaked out, I was like, oh, I feel so much better. Because that had built up. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so twisted. <laughs> well, you know, and I knew it wasn't mine. I knew that there is no possible way I could have been anything, like you said, in my life would indicate that I'd be at that level of freak out and pain and just what I was feeling. I wanted to exit this world because I was like, oh, yeah. I can't even explain where this would come from. So how do I fix it? Or how do I, 
I couldn't go and explain it to somebody. They'd want to put me on some kind of medication because there would be no explanation for it. Yeah. And it literally was plain hip building. And I went, oh, I feel so much better now. So you're saying, I mean, when you say I feel so much better, um, you're saying that, that whatever the buildup was yes. of you knowing that this was coming when that finally hits, it, it then really you, you calmed yeah. down and, yeah. okay, okay, I got it you. It freaked everybody else out after that, but I, I, I had the buildup of the intensity yeah. before it happened, yeah. And then awesome. it went out through everything else. I was just kind of had it all until that happened. Yeah. Or, you know, whoever else was involved in being that sensitive to it. But, yeah. yeah. And then, so, um, do you have kids? Yeah, I have one son. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And, and is, is he somewhat sensitive or gifted in the same way? I think that you more are? so when he was younger, he's, you know, gone out into the world and that isn't part of what, what he does right now, which is fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, was he always accepting of, or, or at least open to kind of, you know, what mom was all about kind of thing? When he was little, yeah. <laughs> Not so much when he got older? Oh, no, because he has his own personality and his own views. And actually, yeah. um, when he was a teenager, I started to think, oh, well, you're not following what I've taught you. And he helped me to realize that he's a much stronger person because he's explored things for himself than to just say, okay, mama yeah. says so. And he also told me that the one thing I taught him was to question things was yeah. to look deeper into things. So, you know, I'm glad he's on the path that he's on and he's figuring it out for who he is and not just going, oh, well, mom does this or mom says that and that's just the way it is. Yeah, so. yeah, okay. Okay, and then um, for, I mean, I assume, you know, probably when you were younger, like like most people in this in this industry, I mean, you had a day job for probably the longest time. Oh yeah. And was it difficult or easy or fast or slow for you to be able to get where, where you were able to just completely um, just do this full time and just immerse yourself in what you knew your purpose was here? Well, I guess for many years, I didn't realize that this would ultimately be what I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was, I lived life. I had the job because that's what People said you did, but I moved from job to job to job after it felt like I had done everything I could at the job. It would become boring. And I'm like, Preach. I'm done now. Totally. Right? <laughs> it's like, that. I don't belong here. And I didn't like other people telling me what to do in the sense of I had to ask like a child, can I have a day off? Can I do yes. this? Can, can I, I go to lunch that? now? Can I, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, can I go to the bathroom? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I should yeah. just be able to go to the bathroom. Yes. <laughs> but, um, uh, so it was, um, well, because I was a single mom, I, um, wanted to be able to work from home. Yeah. And so I was moved back to Michigan because I ultimately got remarried a, for a second time and then we got divorced and I wanted something I could do from home so that I didn't have to figure out anything for my son. So I yeah. was doing a call center from home, which it's surprising people call in to order stuff, how angry they are about it, or it just was, there, was their energy. And it was a very frustrating job. And I started to do Reiki because for my 20 year class reunion, the woman putting it together was like, we should get psychics. People always like psychics. And I, I've been intuitive, but I was always kind of afraid to tell people things yeah. I didn't want to be wrong. And so, I was like, okay. So I contacted a friend who had a psychic friend and the psychic was like, well, you're a healer. Do you know what Reiki is? And I'm like, uh, no. She goes, well, go find out and do it. And I said, okay. <laughs> and, go, and go pay the hundreds of dollars for the classes to get. Well, actually, I did it with a guy um, via video. So oh, you buy on wow. Amazon, you read his books and you do it for via video and because energy is just energy. So I didn't actually take a course. And I'm a video person anyway. I like to watch things more than once to absorb. Yeah. Um, so I did that and I started working on people and then more and more just kept coming out. And I was telling people names of people or seeing visions and going, uh, you know, I had a client that did not look like she ever wore heels or was dancing. And I'm like, uh, is there something wrong with your hip? Because I 
see you dancing? She goes, yeah, I was in a wedding. I was in heels. I was like, oh <laughs> I'm like, okay, then. Um, and uh, I did that for a little while, like as a part-time fun thing, because it really started to make me feel more alive. That's also in 2011 when I started channeling like Esther Hicks. I saw her and I'm like, well, if she can do that, I can do it. So now yeah, I love that channel that same way. And uh, <clears throat> um, so in 2012, I was really getting frustrated with that whole call center, but it was, you know, something I was doing from home. And I asked the, the beings I channel or, or source that I channel, I'm like, well, when can I quit? And they said, whenever you want to. And she's like, really? <laughs> well, when is that? How about right all, these now? Things, all these things aren't lining up because we think, okay, I got to see all the evidence of whatever before I make this choice. Yeah. And what they're saying is make the choice, then everything else shows up. Yeah. And I was, they kept just saying that. I'm like, well, but when can I quit? Right, whenever you want to. Well, that doesn't, I don't understand that because I don't see anything else. And they're <laughs> like, that's fine. We'll have your back. Just make the decision. Yeah, trust. And as scary as that was, I was like, okay, fine. So at the beginning of 2013, I just said, okay, this is what I do. Nice. And that's it. Yeah, good for you. Um, tell me about some of like um, the most profound or, you know, aha moments or, or things where like afterwards you were like, holy cow, like I didn't even know I could do that. Or, you know, just some, some really profound moments that you've had with the energy work and things like that. Well, let's see. Um, of course, I'm going to go blank because you're asking me. <laughs> <laughs> And after we're done talking, I'll be like, oh, there was that time, and there was that time. Yes, um, yes. Just oh. talking to people. Every time, I don't do it anymore. It's gone in stages. Like when I first started telling people information, I would um, hesitate on what I was telling them or censor it. Like I'm like, I can't say that to someone. And then the conversation would proceed, and that would have to come out anyway. And they'd be like, that's perfect. That's exactly what I needed to hear. And I'm like, yeah. oh, okay. So I started to not censor anything. I'm like, okay, whatever's coming out, it's going to come out. You do, yeah. do with it what you want. And um, I've had times where uh, I, I channel very high vibrational energy, and I prefer to work with very high vibrational energy. So dead people to me are low vibrational. <laughs> but I still, they still come and have conversations with me. So usually when I'm working with a client, one of their relatives will come in and it always kind of throws me off a little. And then I proceed to explain things like the mannerisms. I don't actually see them. I see them in my mind's eye and feel them, feel yeah. what they feel like, how they're standing, how they talk and what they're saying. And then that always just, people are like, whoa, <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> I didn't know they were coming. So yeah, bonus. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, some profound things or occasionally I'll say something in passing, not even really thinking about it as kind of a bit of information I'm really wanting to give them. And then the thing will happen and they'll go, remember that thing you said? Oh yeah. They'll be like, that happened exactly like that. Like one of my clients around a, a judge, I'm like, don't worry about it. He won't show up that day. Yeah. And, and she, she was like, Oh no, it's planned for that day. And then she, she's like, guess what? He just didn't show up that day. <laughs> like, oh, okay. So now when I say things more in passing, I'll be like, let's pay attention to that because there's something. Yeah. Because yeah. nothing's really in passing, right? No, nothing so, is. And yesterday I saw the St. Francis of Assisi, his prayer. Uh -huh. I don't remember it offhand exactly, but I saw it in a show I was watching that's an older show and you wouldn't even think they'd bring it up. It was Western times. And then I got a little um, in a, one of those donation packets in the mail, I got the little um, prayer. So I'm thinking something's going on with that. So I'm paying attention to what's happening. But usually when St. Francis comes to me, uh, it has to do with the new Pope because he named himself after St. Francis of Assisi. So okay. I haven't seen anything yet, but generally I, the morning that he claimed that name, St. Francis was at my 
board of directors table talking to me in Italian. I didn't know what he was saying. <laughs> at three o'clock in the morning, I woke up and he's at my this board of directors table I have with different um, people at it. And he's talking to me. And then that day, the Pope, the new Pope named himself after St. Francis of Assisi. And then another time, uh, I had this vision, I call them vision dreams, with a lot of stuff going on. It felt like a church. There was a lot of Italian talking. When I hear Italian, I know it has to do with the, the Pope or something. And that was the day he announced that there was no hell. So, wow. So I'm thinking, I don't know, St. Francis of Assisi coming up at, I don't know what's the Pope going to do. <laughs> you know, I think the only reference I've heard over the years when it came to, to St. Francis is uh, uh, Wayne Dyer used to talk about about him a lot and and did some studies on some old writings and you know and things like that where he was concerned and <clears throat> oh you just made me figure out where the third one was i just in my class played the shift the wayne dyer movie and he talks about going into oh, yeah. thing and carrying that guy in saint francis of yes Jesus. okay that yeah, was when his right. niece should have given out but didn't i i actually I have, right. that video. I have that on video as well i love that i love so there's that. like three things you just brought that to my attention I, oh, okay, cool. Usually things come in three, so that was, I still <laughs> don't know exactly why I'm needing to hear that right now, but for whatever reason, it's but coming it'll up. Come. So it'll there's come. something that, that'll show up, and I'll be like, ah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> so I look for things now more because of everything that happens. I might not know when I'm seeing it in the moment what it yeah. is, but I pay more attention because I've had things on the road where I noticed a lane that was open one time. Uh -huh. It was a like a four lane road. And I looked over and I thought, oh, I could move over to that lane if I wanted to. And then I'm like, but I don't need to. And I'm driving along and a woman came across two of the lanes almost to the side of my car. And I had to move into that space. So I had already recognized, I was already shown that space was there for me yeah. when it happened. <clears throat> so now I just, okay, when I see stuff, what is that? And uh, I see a lot of synchronicities all the time, and the um, yeah, and it's just amazing. And I pay attention to them. That's part of it. Is you see them because you pay attention to them, and yeah. it's like a game now. It's fun. Okay, well, it is, is and it's it's a fun game playing the playing the game of the universe and and understanding the laws and and how everything works and how everything is connected and stuff can can be a really really fun and exciting and um, I almost want to say like childlike just because mm -hmm. it, it is that imaginative you know side of you um that you have as a kid where anything is possible when you're a kid anything is possible you know you see them running around acting like pirates or you know cowboys Super or hero. whatever and when you watch kids do that like they're there you know it would be so fascinating to know what they are seeing and feeling and stuff because like because they're there and you can see that they're there um and so i, I mean it's kind of like that for grown-ups once you understand the way the universe works and stuff like that so um this feels like my playground when i get to work with people and do energy work or you know set set on stage and channel or do something like this anymore that this is my play this yeah, is me being work. in that child energy of this is the greatest thing yeah it's it's so much fun who wouldn't want to do this all the time <laughs> yes yes absolutely and that's the place that people need to get as an adult i mean so many of us feel like we're supposed to be just like beat down you know as an adult and things are supposed to be so hard and you're supposed to meet up with coworkers or family and just bitch about how much things suck and how broke you are and you know and stuff like that and you know I know that people use that as a way to connect um, because I've done it most of my life. I, I did that. You know, you work in the nine to five job complaining about the way it's run or how little they pay you, you know, kind of thing. And, and you're connecting on that level. Um, but I know now that all that does is keep you at that level. Um, you but know, if you don't know that that's where you're at, then you don't know no. that there's something different. Yeah, you have no idea that that's that 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 you're holding yourself in that space by doing that on a regular basis. When you focus on what is, you get more of what is, um, kind of thing. So, uh, so yeah, once you get it, though, it is it is super fun and playful and freeing. Yeah, yes, very freeing, freeing and empowering. 
yeah, at the same time. So, mm -hmm. so is what you do um, for your clients, is that stuff that you can do over the phone um, as well as in person or is it just in person or how does that work? Actually, I don't do it in person anymore because oh, okay. it, then there's, there's can be distractive energies in person. If okay. that makes sense, like when I used to do healing work over people and they, I might have my eyes closed and be into the space and then their arm comes up and hits me and then it knocks me out of the, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like jarring, whoa. Um, yeah. So now I do everything via Zoom and okay. virtual. Just like this, the video. Yeah, because yeah. there's no limit to the energy. So this allows us to each be in our own space and the energy to be, well, my energy is more powerful than most people's anyway so it, it mine will take over the space and bring them into a higher vibration but yeah everything's done this okay. way and it's and what are the what are um i mean i know we've talked a little bit about some some of the things that you do for your clients but can you kind of give everybody a rundown of of, of kind of what it is that you offer oh well i usually work more um, deeply and for longer periods of time with people because i found for myself too is that one or two sessions it's kind of like a high it feels good but right. there is a consistency and a repetition and a um you know continuing to do something that really creates transformation and yeah. so i work with people like four months six months nine months to really and even longer depending on you know at the point that that time frame's done what do they still want to create what do they still want to do and if it's still a good fit we continue it doesn't have to be an end but um yeah. to really you got to clear out the old stuff first there's so that's, no that's kind of what you're doing for them is helping yeah. them clear out energetic blocks uh, mental blocks um whatever it is old, holding old them programming back. our old belief systems our yeah. old stuck emotions things that we didn't fully process and doing it energetically, we can move that much more quickly. And okay, I was going to say, and how are you doing that for them? But you're doing energetically. You're okay. And whatever tools need. To, sometimes I go in and find the emotion for them. Sometimes we just pick an emotion that they're feeling. Um, it, there's all different. Uh, over, I'm almost 50 years old, so I have a lot of tools. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> been doing this for a while. <laughs> yeah, and and they're everything that I've done to myself too. When I yeah. do it and work with it first, I get excited. Oh, now look at this. And some of it is I've gotten from other people and then made into my own way of doing it. And then yeah. more lately, I've come up with, I've been um, receiving my own type of uh, methods of energy work, of collapsing energy and expanding it into a higher place yeah. so that it just quickly moves you from this side to this side. And, but gets the fullness of the experiences your soul wanted to have, because that's an important part of this whole life journey. Yeah. Is that our soul feels satisfied or it repeats it again. That's why we have these patterns is because the soul didn't feel complete. So let's do it again and yeah. we'll get what we can get out of it. So, and then helping people to really fall in love with themselves. I think we're so disconnected. Yeah. Um, and it's in the places. Important separation that we don't are, are don't fall in love with ourself anymore we wait for that to come from outer places that mm -hmm. we don't again feel satisfied from because it's not coming so once you move out of the mucky stuff you can see your magnificence more you can see yeah. how beautiful you are and you start to fall in love with that divine being and the human experience you get to be in because it really is we're here for the fun of it we didn't come to suffer we came because we knew we'd have some fun yes <laughs> yes and then to create from that higher place the life that they want to live and to see everything in, from a different perspective so yeah that is so that's that's so awesome um i love that you take people um from a to z uh and especially because a lot of people when they don't when they don't understand how energy work and stuff like that is they'll go like you said once or twice and get that little high like oh i felt something that time let me go do that one more time and you know and they just or maybe they've never been in that kind of a meditative state and so it's new to them and they think it's fascinating and exciting and stuff but then they don't um but then they don't follow up they don't keep going uh or they don't take it out into their life because it's right. not just in that moment it's 
this is how you begin living and yeah. life becomes different. I mean, you know, I was even thinking about this morning that when I walk outside, it, it seems weird because I remember what it was like before, but everything is, is beautiful. All the life out there, even the things that most, well, it's dreary and gray, but that dreary and gray, it still has its beauty in it. It does. And, I love dreary and gray. <laughs> I love it all. I mean, the, yeah. the leaves on the ground, the trees say that the leaves are on the ground because that's their blanket. But yeah, I talk to trees and plants. <laughs> I mean, there's no limit. I've moved hurricanes. I mean, I have manifested some crazy things with wow. Dyer, with Neil Donald Walsh. Yeah, with things that people would go, you can't do that. Heck, I made the Detroit Lions win exactly how I wanted them to win. So I could... Uh, Not last weekend, you didn't. No, no, last year. <laughs> I, I even wrote to uh, Martha Ford and said, hey, I'd like to help with the energy of the team. And Unfortunately, they don't believe in this stuff. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. No, I am actually a big Packer fan. Uh, and so and they played the Lions last Sunday. And so <laughs> it was a very, very close game. Um, and they just, uh, the Packers won at the very end. But so, yeah, when you said that, I'm like, yeah, not last weekend. They didn't. No, I haven't been working on them, though. But last year yeah. I did and, and was with my friend and his family. And um, they always say how many games are going to be won and what the scores are. And so I said, well, they're going to win this many. And yeah. they did. And I kept, I would make, watch the games and like move them along or slow them down or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and on the final game that they were going to get to, for me to be the person that, you know, my score was right. And then another person picked that same day or that same amount. Only we had to pick a score for the game. Yeah. And I picked the score and I actually was like holding them back from, because hers was higher than mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, was like, more. <laughs> I was like two points off from what I said. And yeah. they all just looked at me and I said, well, I told you. So, I mean, there really <laughs> is nothing so we can't do. When I tell you things. Like, <laughs> there yeah. really isn't anything that we can't. I, yeah, well, that's that's good to know because yeah, last Sunday yeah, I was sitting there watching like, come on, Aaron, come on, <laughs> I believe in you, you can do this. Well, actually, I'm not a big football person, but I wanted to just see if I could influence the energy. Yeah. So, but there's only to a certain degree. That's what people I want people to understand is I've yeah. gotten myself to a um, place where I'm not attached to necessarily to things from a higher level so it's easier to actually influence the energy of things because yeah. I always know it's going to be what it needs to be anyway. Yeah. And yeah. So, okay. That is so interesting. Is it how how are you guys is it cold out there yet? Is it cold? Yeah, it's nippy. <laughs> is it? Okay. I'm it's asking so everybody, like I mean, we're at the middle of October now, and I'm in Southern California, and uh, I believe it's going to be 83 degrees today. Yeah, no. Um, so, <laughs> so, My yeah, heater so is running at 65. <laughs> oh, your heater? My wow. heater's on, and it's, it's set at 65. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually kind of jealous. I, I, I love Southern California. Um, after spending many years in Wyoming and the winters and stuff, like, I'm, I'm so done, but... <laughs> But, and I, and I love Southern California, um, but I miss, uh, I miss that, that crisp, cool air that you walk out and go, ooh, you know, fall's here. And well, it's you know, also kind of cider thing. mill time. So like the warm donuts and, you know, going to the cider mill, that only yeah. happens during this time. And, yeah. Yeah. And the, and the changing of the, the leaves. I mean, I lived in Florida for like 15 years and. Yes. Christmas right. lights on palm trees is still really weird. It doesn't matter how long you live somewhere. It's just odd looking. Yeah. But here, you know, you get the snow. You get the, I love having my windows open in like 60 and 70. Not right now because it's that cold 60 or yeah. cold 50, but in that nice 60, 70 and the air is moving. And, and I like that. I couldn't do that in Florida. It was too hot and muggy. Yeah. Oh gosh, but I, I'll just like, I'll close all the blinds and, and maybe turn the AC down a little bit, like to make it cold, <laughs> you know, and I'll close the blinds so the sunshine's not coming in so I can pretend it's cloudy outside, <laughs> you oh, know, I'll have to send you some pants and make hot chocolate and yeah, uh, some soup or something. And I'm like, oh, oh it's cold. <laughs> I love the fall. <laughs> 
because yeah it won't be if we get winter here it seems like for a week or two in january maybe <laughs> florida was like that too yeah that it's yeah. actually kind of chilly but i mean but not not too bad that's the only thing that i that i don't like um that I don't like about Southern California is I miss, I miss that, that coolness, you know, kind of thing, but. I even like to shovel in the winter because it's a time that I get to go outside. Otherwise I don't, it's too cold. So I don't really go outside. So I bundle up, I go out and shovel and I put in like an audio book or something and I listen yeah. to it and I'm like, look, I'd be doing something else in the house and now I can listen to this. And yeah. So because yeah. people are like, I hate shoveling. I'm like, no, it's, and all those snowflakes, how perfect they are. Oh, you know, that, that part was pretty. Um, that part was pretty. I'll always, I'll always kind of miss and, and love that part of it. But, but yeah, but driving in it. Um, no, I don't like that one. No more. Yeah, no, or, or just, you know, it would get so high. I'd be standing there doing the dishes. Cats would be walking, you know, right in front of the <laughs> kitchen window. And I'm like, what? Like, you know, cause that normally that's about four or five feet off the ground, you know, but the snow drifts anyways and stuff falling off the roof would get so bad that you could see the cats walking by and, and it was funny at the time, but like the trampoline would disappear. And I mean, and those things are pretty high off the ground and yeah. you just couldn't even see it anymore. And I would just go, I can't do this. <laughs> like, no. yeah. Well, I've lived in both. So yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. Um, so not to get so far off the subject. So, um, so do me a favor, tell everybody how, um, they can get a hold of you website, oh, okay. email, whatever you're comfortable with, if they're interested in, in getting some work done. Great. Um, well, I have a website, it's create by vibration.com and okay. you, or you can look me up under Tammy Braswell. Um, okay. And uh, I'm on Facebook, and okay. uh, I have a Facebook group that I'm pretty active in. Like, I'm going to do a live stream in there today on different types of higher awarenesses. And um, so, okay. I, and on my website, I have a, um, a free gift of an audio called Calm the Chaos, Become the Master of Your Energy, which helps you to really pull your energy back in and get more centered and clear and not feel so scattered. So yeah. that's a, if you want to get to know me, that's a great way to start and just check out what I do. Well, that sounds great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you so, so much, Tammy. This has been so much fun. Well, thank um, you. So yeah, take, take note of those, uh, of the websites and the email and stuff. If you want to get a hold of Tammy and we will see you next time on outside the box with expansion network. Thanks. Have a great day.